here at Great Guana Key in the Abacos, just anchored outside of Dive Guana and Grabbers. Um, this is a few years ago before Hurricane Dorian, and after a great dive with Dive Guana, um, decided to uh, get in the water under the boat and replace our sacrificial anodes. Um, sacrificial anodes, as you know, are uh, important to as being the lesser of the metals, easier to corrode, saving your prop shaft, rudder stock, and drive unit, and so forth. So we're just gonna get under the boat here, uh, grab my camera, and take a look. Looks pretty clean. Uh, the boat is moving quite a bit, so uh, our boat remains pretty clean. Um, that there that you just saw was the underwater lights. We have a folding prop, we have a sacrificial anode on the end there. Okay, uh, you know, once it gets to be about half its original size, it's a good idea to remove it. Also, you want to clean them because when they get all that film on it, uh, they don't work as well. You want to have it exposed to the elements. Right there, I have a, uh, just before that, you saw a, a razor cutter. That saved me a few times. Um, and then we have another, another sacrificial anode on the prop shaft. Just taking a little swim around the boat and having a look around. Now magnesium anodes are great for fresh water. Aluminum are great for are good for salt and fresh brackish if you frequent between the two waters a lot. But nothing beats a zinc. It's the king of salt water. Especially if you're leaving the boat on a mooring or on a dock for a long period of time, um, because it will self-clean as the boat moves through the water and uh, reactivate itself. Now we're looking here at the bottom of the keel. Uh, it's looking good. It looks like looks what appears to be a little bit of rust, but it's more of like a little rust combined with some some growth. Um, we have an iron keel as opposed to a lead keel. They don't make lead keels really anymore. Um, iron tends to rust a little bit and it's not as dense. But in any case, so with the scuba gear, it makes it real easy as opposed to um, trying to do this uh, free diving. Basically, I, I removed them. It wasn't that difficult. Um, the metal is getting quite brittle, so screws kind of pretty much just fall off at this point. Um, have the camera just attached to my chest, so I'm not always getting the best views here. Um, and this is the anode that we have on the prop shaft, and we are using zincs. It's good to always have a spare. Uh, I always buy two or three at a time. Okay, now it comes off quite easily at this point. It's just being held together with the corrosion when I when it just pops right off. Just want to clean the shaft a bit more before I uh, go and put the new one on. Okay. Then I'm just going to swim to the back of the boat there, grab the new one. There we go. You can see the underwater lights. We have two blue underwater lights there. Uh, scuba, scuba gear makes it so much easier. You don't have to uh, work quickly or fret or panic. Just take your time and get her done. Okay, we got those on pretty easily. And then the rear at the back of the prop, there's one larger kind of screw that goes in there and you're done. Well, Dive Guana was nice enough to lend me the, the scuba gear for a bit to do this after our dive. I don't keep scuba gear on the boat. So that's something to consider if you're doing a dive. Just ask the dive shop if they'll uh, let you borrow the, the equipment for a couple hours. Okay, there it is. The finished and installed uh, sink on the shaft. You want to make sure they're tight and attached to the metals. You don't want them just kind of sliding around. And uh, finally, a view of the prop. There it is. Vinny, great job, Ed.